Welcome back to Whisper Gaming ASMR. And if you're new here, I just want to let you know I upload two versions of all my videos. One with quiet gameplay audio and one without. So if you'd prefer to watch the other version, it is linked at the top of the video description below. But with that out of the way, thank you for clicking on my video and joining me. This one's going to be a little different than most of my videos. This is going to be a ramble, and I recorded the gameplay footage previously. So I can just focus on my ramble without getting distracted by what's going on in the game. And this is the second part of this short little series of me rambling about my vacation to Portugal. So, if you want to watch the first part, uh, it's on my channel. It might be in the related videos. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll link it right here. But you didn't miss out on too much. Again, this is just a ramble, so... In the first part, I talked about my trip with my girlfriend and being in the city of Porto. And I believe I uh, ended it as we were getting on the train to go to Lisbon. But before I forget, I want to put in a jawbreaker. Because this is a hard candy video. It always takes me a little bit to find the right place to rip these wrappers open. There we go. So after a few days in Porto, we checked out of our Airbnb and went to the train station to go to Lisbon, or as I think the Portuguese call it, Lisboa, which if that's what they call it, I don't understand why we don't all just call it that. I wonder where Lisbon came from. But anyway, we went to the train station and kind of had to figure out how to get a train to Lisbon, but it wasn't too difficult. So we bought our tickets and found the right platform, uh, getting around with our giant checked bags and backpacks, and my banjo was a little, little bit of a hassle, but not too bad. The biggest thing was we didn't understand how the tickets worked, so we saw the seat numbers and got into like the first car we saw that was, I think there was like premium and then economy, we were in the economy section. So he's got like in the first car and found our seat numbers and put our bags up and everything, but then other people showed up and they had tickets for our seat as well and we realized there was a car number for each ticket so we were in the wrong seat we we're in the right seats but on the wrong car so that was a little bit awkward since the other people didn't really speak english and we don't speak any other languages then we had to awkwardly like grab all our bags and move them, but that wasn't the end of the world. So that train ride took a few hours, and then we got to Lisboa, and it was much, much busier than Porto. It kind of felt like being in New York again. Like it felt like the Portuguese version of New York. Well, yeah, quick little side tangent I forgot to mention. This gameplay footage is pretty bad. I made so many, so many stupid mistakes. Um, so, hope you guys don't judge me too hard for that. This was my first time playing with a GameCube controller, so... I kept getting the jump and attack buttons mixed up. And besides that, I just handled this temple in a really stupid way. But, I hope you guys find it as entertaining as I find it embarrassing. I meant to mention that at the top of the video, but I forgot. But anyway, so we got to Lisbon. 
they got checked into our Airbnb. That was a bit of a hassle because it was up four flights of stairs. And it was like a spiral, kind of narrow staircase. And like I mentioned, we had a lot of stuff to carry and it was very heavy. So, yeah, that was a pain. But the Airbnb itself was very nice. We kind of splurged on this one. It was the most expensive and nicest one that we got. Um, and it was like overlooking this square where there are like tables and chairs and umbrellas and people could get different sandwiches and beer and stuff and it was just a really cool area to be in. So after we checked in, kind of just got settled a bit and then we went around to kind of explore Lisbon. We had a big checklist of all the tourist spots we wanted to see, so we walked around and saw the arch and a few different squares. There was like a seemed like a flower festival or something going on. That was cool. Um, what else did we see? We went to Pink Street, which I don't know. I hadn't looked anything up. My girlfriend had looked all this stuff up. She's on TikTok a lot, so Pink Street apparently looks very nice on TikTok, but then you get there and it's like really trashy. It's literally a street painted pink. But it's just like very touristy and trashy. Kinda I haven't been to Bourbon Street, but I'm assuming it's probably similar to like the Portuguese version of Bourbon Street. We saw basically around everything on our sightseeing list on the first day, which was nice. And then there's some historic tram. Maybe it's like tram 28 or something. I can't remember the number. That's probably wrong. But some historic tram that everyone apparently says you need to experience, or at least that's what my girlfriend said. She's, she's like, everyone said if you do one thing and Lisbon, you have to do the tram, which, when everybody says you have to do something, I'm always very skeptical. I don't really trust everybody, but anyway, we went to it as kind of later in the day, and we took a long route to get there. We basically walked the tram route to get there, so we already saw everything the tram was going to pass. And then when we got there, there was a pretty long line. I think we waited close to an hour before we got on, and yeah, it was very underwhelming. It was just going through back alleys and stuff. Couldn't really see anything besides the sidewalk and buildings next to you. And my girlfriend only wanted to ride it for a few like stops. I'm like, we just waited an hour. I'm not gonna just ride it for like five minutes after waiting an hour and then get off. And I was assuming it'd get better after how much she talked it up. So we rode it to the end. It didn't really get any better. And then we ended up being like a half an hour drive from our Airbnb. And when we started, we were like a five minute walk from our Airbnb. So that wasn't ideal. I'm definitely kind of an all or none person. So I'm like, if we're doing this tram, we're doing the whole thing. But in retrospect, she is probably right. If I would have known, it wouldn't have gotten better. I would have probably said we should have got off after a couple of stops. But yeah, then after that, um, we went to go see the sunset. And it was kind of late because of the tram. We got back so late, so we kind of had to rush and the sun had already gone behind the buildings, but... We found this nice overlook spot. Like there's a saxophone player and people were hanging out and taking pictures and stuff, so that was kind of cool. Then we got ready for dinner and we went to this. I think it's a pretty popular Italian place. Um, I think it's called Lunetta. So we had to wait in line for that for a while, which wasn't the end of the world, but we got in. It had a pretty cool atmosphere. And, uh, I'm very picky. As I mentioned,
mentioned previously, I do like pasta, but I typically just get like red sauce and Parmesan cheese. I'm like, I'll eat any type of pasta, but yeah, I'm usually a red sauce guy. So I think I basically got like some type of red sauce dish I can't really remember. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but it did end up being really good. And we got, I think we split a bottle of wine. It's hard to remember all the meals now. They kind of all blend together. But it was a nice Italian place. So like we did before, we made a reservation to go back on, so yeah, we got there Friday. We made a reservation to go back on Sunday. So we wouldn't have to wait in line. But yeah, so that was that night. I think we ate pretty late. So we probably got back to our Airbnb around 11. And we had plans to get up early the next day. So we took it kind of easy and went to bed. And then the next day we went up. Oh, we woke up and got ready, and I think we might have went and got breakfast somewhere. We did brunch like every morning too, which I forgot to really mention, but that's not too exciting. But the brunch was very good there. I'm not really much of a breakfast or brunch person. Like I do intermittent fasting, so I skip breakfast most days. And of all the meals to go out and like eat at a restaurant, Breakfast is definitely my least favorite, but I really enjoyed all the brunches uh, in Portugal. The food was really good, and I think the price helped a lot too, that, how cheap it was. Um, so we got up and had breakfast, and then we, we were thinking about taking the train to Sintra, but it seemed kind of like a shit show, and it was only, I think, like $30 to Uber there, which is insane, because it was probably like a 40-minute drive, which in New York, that'd probably be like $200, but, yeah, so we took an Air, well, why do I keep calling Ubers Airbnbs? We took an Uber to Sintra, which is this kind of small town, and it, like, surrounded by mountains and stuff, and there's a bunch of different castles there. So, we went to go see some castles. I don't know why, I can't remember the name of the first one. But it has um, this thing called the Initiation Well, which is this deep well in the ground, and there's like a spiral staircase that goes around it down the well. And it opens up into these underground caves, which is really cool. And it had like some cathedrals and different cool little things to look at. So that's where we went first and walked around for a while. And then we went to the Moorish Castle, which is really high up on the mountain, or a mountain there. And there's this big long wall. And I guess it was built to um, kind of watch over Sintra and Lisbon back in the day. That one was really cool. You fell really high up, and I, I have no idea how they built that. I don't know how they built any of them, but it must have taken so long to build that huge wall up on the top of this huge mountain. Then after that, we went to Penna Palace, which is probably the most famous castle in Sintra. If you haven't heard of it or seen it, I would recommend you look it up. I think it's P-E-N-A, uh, Pena Palace, but it's painted with very, like, vibrant, cool colors, so it's, like, red and yellow and just different colors. It looks really cool, um, but we'd watched some videos about Sintra, and the people we watched recommended not going inside. They said it wasn't really worth it. We said the outside was cooler, and it cost more to go inside, and you had to wait in a really long line. At least that was a little underwhelming, so. We took their advice and got the cheaper tickets just to go to the grounds. I think it's what it was called, the Penna Palace Grounds. And we thought we'd be able to actually, like, 
get inside the walls and walk around outside the, outside the palace. But we were mistaken. So, like from where you bought the tickets to where the palace was, you had to walk up like a really steep hill, or I guess mountain, um, which took about probably 10 minutes. And then we got up there and there was a huge, huge, long, like long, long line, like longer than you'd find in Disney World. And we're like, oh, this must be to get inside the actual, like to walk inside the castle. But we found out that that was to get inside the castle, but also just inside the wall of the castle. So the tickets we bought, we could only walk around outside the wall, which we could still see parts of the castle, and it was cool, but we didn't get to see as much as we were expecting. So we're a little bummed about that, because that was the castle we were most excited to see. But it was still cool, and I don't think I would have changed it in retrospect, because that line definitely would have taken at least an hour, if not longer, to get through, and I don't think it would have been worth waiting for that. So at this point, it was probably like 4 or 5 in the afternoon, probably like 4 or 4.30, and we hadn't really eaten at all, and we'd been walking around and in the sun all day, and Sintra has a really cool, like, little downtown area in the village, and they apparently have good food, and they're like known for their sangria drinks. So we went to this cool little outside sit-down place and got like a couple of small pizzas, or we split a small pizza, and got some sangria drinks and had french fries and stuff like that, which was really nice and the food was good. And then we got some gelato after. And then there was a fourth castle we wanted to see. I think it was like the Montserrat something. Montserrat Palace, or I don't know, has apparently one of the world's best botanical gardens, or at least one of the best in Portugal. And that's the one I was really the most excited about. It had like a Middle Eastern architecture vibe, and I thought the botanical gardens would be pretty cool as well. Um, but it's really far out of the way. Like, there are a lot of one-way roads in Sintra. So a lot of times we'd call an Uber or something, and the Uber would end up canceling on us, or, like, when we booked it, it says three minutes away, and then when it actually confirmed, it would be, like, 25 minutes away. So, getting to this last castle was kind of a pain in the ass. And it's starting to push 6 o'clock, and it closed around 7. So we were getting a little stressed. There's a bus we tried to take, but it didn't show up for a while. Now it did show up. It was completely full, so it didn't even stop. And yeah, then finally we got... So they have like their own version of Uber over there called Bolt, which I signed up for. And we finally got a Bolt driver to drive us there. Um, and as we were on our way, a car ahead of us stalled out on this hill was stuck there for like probably like five or six minutes holding up traffic and then we finally figured it out and drove on and uh yeah so we got to the place and it was probably like exactly five or six minutes after six and we went to go buy tickets and they're like we're closed on like it says it's open till seven online and the guy was like yeah it is open till seven but we stopped selling tickets at 6. And we're like, Jesus, like, we're only a few minutes late. Like, we just spent all this time trying to get there. And he would not budge. And this other couple with a baby came up and tried to get in. And he said no. And he's like, oh, it's my wife's birthday. Like, we came all the way from London. He was giving this little sob story. And the guy still wouldn't budge. So I'm like, there's no way we're getting in. And then I recognized... The other couple getting in were the people in the car that stalled ahead of us. Because after a few minutes, the guy got out and was like looking at the car and was like trying to tell people to go around. But 
it was on this corner on a hill, so you couldn't really go around in the other lane. Um, but yeah, so ironically, those people that made it so we couldn't get there were also going there and couldn't get in, but we ended up talking to them. We didn't mention that we were behind them, but we like took their picture and they took our picture because there was, there was like a viewpoint outside that you could still see kind of part of the, um, part of the castle and it was like sunset, so. But yeah, that's the end of our trip to Sintra and then we headed back to, headed back to Lisbon and showered and stuff. I think we went and caught the sunset actually really quick. When we got back, the sun was still setting. So we went back to the same sunset spot from the day before and we caught it early enough that it was still light out, um, so that was nice. Now we went back and we couldn't decide if we wanted to go out or if we wanted to stay in and what we wanted to eat. We were like really indecisive for a while, so we like showered and we're fully in bed and ready to be lame. We were like, this is like our one night for us to go out since, I mean, we could have gone out the next night, but we had to get up early to head to Lagos, so like close to 11 we finally got out of bed got ready and went to pink street which was incredibly packed the whole street was packed you could barely move um, but we found a restaurant to eat at we found a mexican place and got some food and margaritas and stuff and then we went to go find a bar on pink street to go have drinks at and like dance and have fun So the first one we went to, I can't remember the name, but it like just looked like a lame pizza parlor and they had like cheesy lights in the back and they're just playing like Blink-182 type music basically and it was like 99% dudes in there and I'm like, well, we can definitely do better than this place. So we laughed at my girlfriends and like, why don't you choose a place? So we walked around and I saw this place that had like a sign out front that said punk indie rock music and something else, I can't remember what else it said. Um, but I looked like it was going to be like this underground punk club, like I was expecting like a, like a live band on stage playing like crazy music and like a mosh pit and shit, which isn't like really what I'm into, but I like weird stuff and new experiences. So I'm like, we're in Europe, like I thought it was gonna be kind of crazy. And there's like a lady with like a shaved head out front and a big bouncer, it looked like a cool club. So I'm like, let's check that out. And of course there's a $10 cover or a 10 euro cover, which none of the other bars had. Um, and my girlfriend's like, oh, has the music started yet? And they're like, oh yeah, the music just started. We, I mean, at least I thought it was a live band. I don't know if my girlfriend did. But, yeah, so we go in and luckily they do tell us that we can use our, we get like a ticket with the cover to get our first, um, first beer for free. So we walk in and it is not, how they advertised it at all. Like, we're definitely the youngest people in there. We're in our late 20s. It's like, probably people in their late 40s to like mid 50s, at least. And the guy's playing like old music from the 60s and 70s, which I'm all about. Like, I basically only listen to old music. Like, I listen to music from like the 20s to, I mean, some modern stuff, but I'd say most of the stuff I listen to is from the 60s and 70s. So I was digging the music, but I'm like, this is the furthest thing from indie punk rock you can get. And yeah, it just goes not what I was expecting, but the drinks were cheap. And I like the vibe, it's really good. Uh, it's a good place to people watch. Like watching old people like get turned, dancing on each other and stuff is very entertaining. So we got some drinks and got into it and ended up dancing for a while. There were a few 
other younger couples that showed up too, and they all had the same reaction as us. They're like, what the fuck is this? This is not, this is not what we signed up for. And I looked up the reviews, and as you'd expect, there were a lot of one-star reviews of like how they basically trick people to coming in. But anyway, I liked it a lot. It's like the favorite, my favorite bar that I've been to in a long time. Um, and then, so he probably stayed there for 45 minutes to an hour. At this point, it was like almost one o'clock, so I thought we'd try to find a bar that was closer to my girlfriend's vibe. So we went to this place, like, a few doors down. I think it was called Pink Whiskey or something like that. Um, and, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot more crowded, and the place we came from, I think it was called the Music Box or something, the one that I liked, was like a pretty good mix of men and women, I'd say it's close to 50-50, but Pink Whiskey was probably like more like 80% dudes, 20% girls, it was just like a lot of sweaty dudes, like fist bumping and being obnoxious, and it was like all modern, like... I usually describe it as like chain smokers like music, like if you know the band, the chain smokers like that type of music, which I don't mind. It's just not exactly my vibe, but it's my girlfriend's vibe. So that bar was definitely up our alley and the drinks are more expensive and it was so hot in there. It was like a hundred degrees, um, but it wasn't bad and I sucked it up and still had fun because it was what she wanted to do. So we were there for probably like half an hour, 45 minutes, and it was like almost two o'clock, so it had been a very long day. So we left and went back to the Airbnb. And then the next day, we didn't really have much planned in Lisbon. We went and got brunch. And then we just kind of went and explored more. I wanted to do a walking tour, but they're all like three hours long. Which, again, that's like very much my speed, but my girlfriend's not really like the museum or tour type. So I'm like, three hours is like, that's pushing it for me. I would have been into it, but that would have been, that's a lot. So I didn't, I didn't want to force her into that. And also it's hard to find one that started at a good time. But we ended up like finding one and kind of just like walking along with it and hearing some of the history, which is cool. Like learning about some of the older history from when Portugal was like colonizing um, South America and learning about some of their more like recent revolutions and stuff. I thought that was cool. Um, and then, yeah, we just kind of walked around and saw different things. There's this, I think, coven that got. Um, mostly destroyed during an earthquake that I really wanted to go see. But of course, the one day of the week it's closed was Sunday, so we didn't get to go in and see that, but we saw it from the outside, and that was a pretty late back day. We just walked around and got food and drinks and stuff like that. And then we went to a really cool sunset spot that night. small beach town. Um, 
so we didn't get there till like four in the afternoon. So we checked in, unpacked a little bit, and then went and checked out the beach that was close by. And while we were checking out the beach, there are these people that run kayak tours because there's a bunch of like sea caves. And they talked to us and like, oh, you should do a tour, blah, 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 and kind of sold us on it. They're like 9 a.m., like the early ones in the morning tomorrow are the best ones to go to because there's not as many boats on the water and the water's less choppy and it's not as hot. So that piqued our interest. So then we walked around and went and got lunch and stuff and looked into the kayak tours. And we're like, yeah, that seems pretty cool. Because we were thinking of going to this other cave, the sea cave that's like, I think it's like about 40 minute drive from Lock Ocean. And then you had to get a boat or kayaks and figure it all out. People call it the Bengali cave, but I guess that's not its actual name. Like the Portuguese are making fun of it. But some famous sea cave, we're gonna go to that. We're like, we can do the kayaks instead because we'll get to see a bunch of different caves instead of just one. And we don't have to drive like an hour and a half round trip to get there. So yeah, for the rest of the day, we kind of just took it easy. Got dinner. Yeah, we didn't really do much because we got there so late. Airport, which took a while. And then we had like an 